Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to the first video for the unboxing of Munchkin Dungeons by Simon Games, uh, based on the Steve Jackson Munchkin card games, uh, by Andrea Cherevesso and Eric Lang, and art by John Kolbeck, does the Munchkin artwork. Um, so if you played Munchkin, you kind of have a basic idea of what this game is. You are basically like D&D, &D, but really goofy. Uh, you are creating your characters as you go along. They're earning equipment, gaining levels. Um, trying to get through the dungeon. Uh, so, like, the big munchkin thing is kick open the door. It's basically revealing, like, whether it's a monster or an item or whatever. If there's a monster, fight the monster, beat him, grab the loot, level up. Uh, so you can see there's a dungeon map. Miniatures, you can get your own tile. Characters have various abilities. Um, <clears throat> quest to the dungeon. An adventure, glory, and of course, a chance of betraying your friends. Based on the hit card game Munchkin. Munchkin Dungeon is a competitive push your luck dungeon game. Each round you explore further, seeking so loot, fame, and foes to defeat, but be careful. Uh, the deeper you die delve, the better the rewards, but the monsters get stronger, and your backstabbing friends will add more danger. Of course, it wouldn't be a dungeon with a capital D if there wasn't a boss at the end. The level ready for an epic battle. Beat it, gain fame, lose, get kicked back to the beginning. When the final boss falls, the most famous Munchkin wins. Um, so it's one of the other things that's unique about this. I don't know, unique. It's uh, interesting about the game is while well, you're trying to go through the dungeon and beat monsters and gain treasure and fame and power and items and stuff, um, every time you move, you're creating special fate tokens here. Um, I think I think they're called. Um, <clears throat> and then the other players can all use those tokens to play other cards. It can be like bad effects, like traps, like various monsters. Um, as a, there are other than just these other monsters, you have 3D roaming monsters, and then there'll be other smaller, different monsters that they can play. And then you're like, well, oh, that's not fair. It's all against one. Well, except then the next turn, you're part of that all against one. So kind of remember who you're who you're sabotaging with what card you play. Um, because they might turn around and hit you the next turn. So let's go through this. This should be the first of several videos because this, uh, just came off of Kickstarter. So there's a bunch of expansions and things like that. You'll eventually be re released in retail. And of course, all the Kickstarter exclusive goodies, which will get your own video. Alright, so we just got, like, one of these <clears throat> things. Uh, so, like, here's the basic of the card game. Kick down the door, fight a monster, grab the treasure, level up to reach level 10. So, this one, instead of just hitting level 10 to win, you're trying to become the most famous by doing stuff. So, here's our rule book. She's all our different stuff. Um... I don't know, I went through the rule book during the Kickstarter, I didn't think it was bad. I read comments since that, that people said it doesn't really explain stuff very well. Um, I don't know. Maybe because I played regular Munchkin, I'm already kind of understanding how stuff works, and maybe I've played enough other board games that I can just, you know, figure it out. So I'm not sure, maybe it's not new, new gamer friendly. Uh, but just by looking at this, it seems pretty detailed to me. Um, explaining things, gameplay, so uh, you're showing like how damage works, you know, um, defeated heroes, defeated monsters, fighting the boss, gaining fame, scoring the win, and quick rule summary, um, and then a deal making variant, which I'm not going to get into right now. Uh, so let's look at some of our tokens we got. We got... Uh-oh. Alright, sorry. Froze up there for a sec. We got coins, bait tokens, uh, level markers for five different colored characters. Another backside, same thing. We just got some three-cost coins. <clears throat> uh, health tokens? Damage tokens, maybe? Uh, magic potions? Uh, I don't think they're called loser tokens, but they're like minus fame tokens. And then the stars are your fame. They go on your fame meter. And everything's double-sided, which is really nice. 
a giant bag put stuff in. Here is our dungeon. So this is one section of this. This thing is going to be huge. So just kind of showing says reward for clearing any dungeon in here. You gain two fame and two treasures. Uh, you gain two fame. Uh, one treasure for that level. Not, you know, maybe just because it's a harder level. More bosses. Uh, so here. So then you're going to see there's blank rooms. And then there's rooms with a monster on it. Um, it'll show kind of what you did if you beat that monster. Some have treasure, some have fame, some have gold. The stairs are how you move through the dungeons. So you have multiple options. The empty rooms you play, there's uh, empty room monsters. Uh, your fame token, there's a tracker on the side there. Yep, so there's a threat pool, there's your boss monster, you gain 8 fame. Uh, here's the graveyard, so when you beat one of the roaming monsters, they go here. Um, and then after so many turns, they or uh, something happens, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. Um, they go back into play. So, that way you can't be like, hey, we cleaned out the dungeon. And then you have available loot on the side. And it's just blank on the back. We have some player cards. Uh, so like a wizard. Uh, starts out level one. Um, and it's just showing you gain. Uh, you buy your levels, I think. Uh, two gold to buy a level. Each level you get gets an extra ability. So you start with three dice and three health. So level 2, you have an extra die, um, extra reroll, I think, extra health, just gain 2 fame. So you gain bonuses as you gain more levels up to the level 10, like the regular Munchkin game. Um, and then the wizard has his own special abilities, so you can uh, spend things to do different things. Spend uh, lightning bolts to do various things. You can fusion monsters, roll one less die. You can equip your armor and weapons, so... Everyone has a little bit different, or deal damage to all monsters in the room. And then I think, and you can see like here, so here we have the thief. So he has three dice, which like, I, yeah, I think that's me reroll. Three health. Um, redirect one incoming attack to any monster, or just gain one money. And you can see, though, even like their tracks are different, so... The wizard gains extra dice right away, um, but the uh, thief gains extra health. So I don't know if they're always going to gain the exact same amount of stuff, like three dice, one reroll, four hearts, for everybody always being the same. But at least it makes them all a little bit different. So you're not playing as the same character. Not everyone's playing as the same character. So we have a warrior who has more life. Um, quick attack, deal two damage. To attack, uh, deal one sword for each one lightning bolt roll, take one damage. We have the cleric, divine intervention, uh, deal one attack and heal one damage, or just deal one damage. Dwarf, uh, safety first, add two shields, or deal one damage for every shield roll, shield bash. And then we have some super munchkins. Uh, so these guys are more powerful. You can upgrade the uh, certain effects to become just a super munchkin. So they have a female and a male version. All the other characters, they are either male or female. So there's a male wizard, male thief, uh, female warrior, female cleric, and a male dwarf. Some of the expansions and the Kickstarter stuff added... Uh, other role, other sexes. I don't think they're any. I think they're the exact same abilities, though. Like these guys are the same. It's just that way. If like you're a male character, you can play as a male, or a female, you can play as a female, or vice versa. However you want to do it. Um, so you have jack of all trades. You two shields, two damage, uh, or copyright uh, deal one damage and gain one gold. So those are our character cards. Then there is even different out of the back. These are like brown wood. These guys are like silver metal. Just to keep them separated. 
All right. A lot of content to go through. So we have our generic brown dice here. Uh, one sword, two sword, lightning bolts, and then shields, and then some blank sides. We have little uh, rings to go on the bottom of your characters. So you can tell, keep, keep track of who's who a little bit quicker. Uh, especially when you buy these and they're all blank colored. Let's look at the cards first. At least these cards. So these are our treasures, I believe. They're all treasures? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and, I'm, you know, just kind of read through them. Uh, Munchkin Buddy is an item card, so discard to gain two magic. Um, and this is where everything gets funny. So we have a bow with ribbons. Uh, it's just a weapon. You get to deal one damage. Uh, I think the thing in the top means how much fame you can get at the end of the game for having this weapon. Uh, so chainsaw, bloody dismemberment. Whoops. We have some armor here. Uh, cone of shame. Now, okay, so those are not loser tokens. They're shame tokens. Uh, we gain three gold. Uh, the flaming armor. These marshmallows. Meister card black. Uh, dungeon Meister card. So it's uh, like uh, Master. It's Meister. It's Dungeon Master. A uh, 6666. Six, six, six. Valid through eternity. Um, deal this item. Discard this item and gain one loot from the available loot area. It can be used at any time. It's basically a free thing. There we have a different one. So it's the same name card, just a different effect. That's cool. Uh, gain extra reroll. The stylish rapier. Um, gain one loot if I can use a roaming monster. The sneaky bastard sword. The Swiss army pole arm. Deals extra damage, adds a shield. Uh, badass Bandana, being a shield breach shame token you have. The Piggy Bank Armor, once per turn, if there are no threat tokens in the pool, when you play a threat card, gain one or one gold. The Shield of ubiqu Ubiquity, add two shields. Uh, become a Super Monkey, so that's how you do that. Replace your figure and hero in the dashboard of the with a super monkey, restore your health, your level loot and tokens stay the same, discard one shame and or gain one shame token and discard this card. Uh the blade of blindness. The dagger of treachery. You roll a lightning bolt, redirect one damage to another player in the same or connected room. Self healing armor, start of your turn, heal two damage. Plus one shield of low self-esteem. I was stupid. If you have at least one shame token, monsters you roll gain one less die. I believe you get shame tokens. One way of getting them is if you get to the boss and you lose and you start the dungeon over. So instead of dying, like you do in a normal game and reshuffle, um, you gain a shame token. So basically, you're going to make your way to the boss, probably die the first time, get a shame token, come back around. Um... Hopefully, I'm going to have power the second time. Uh, the Meeple Scepter of Absolute Power. Uh, deal one attack for each different colored Meeple you have in your play area. So, that actually involves having special things. Uh, Wand of Dowsing. If you roll two lightning bolts, gain a loot. The Walk of Shame. Deal one attack for each shame token you have. So, getting something like this can gain more and more powerful. If you die a couple of times. Uh, chicken legs. Uh, on your turn when you enter the get in trouble phase. Decrease the threat pool by one. Chicken wrap. I guess. I guess tape. 
Uh, when you roll one lightning bolt, you gain one loot for each, or one gold for each different chicken loot you have in your play area. So there's a couple of different chickens. Chicken soup at the start of your turn, heal one damage for each different, if different chicken loot you have. So getting sets of chicken stuff would be helpful. The money sink, once per turn you may spend three gold to gain three fame. Economic engine. Once per turn, when you would gain one or more gold, you gain two additional gold. Uh, Alpha Gamer Helmet. I had one uh, shield all your ro fight rolls. Gentleman's Club. Deal one damage, deal one damage. Junk Mail. Trash Can, Refrigerator Door. Add to Defense. Uh, here's some of the meeples. So we have a green meeple worth one uh, fame for each different color meeple you have in your play area. Green one's eating a pizza. The yellow one has some rules. The blue one looks impatient. Red one just seems nonchalantly happy. Uh, we have the wombo blade. Um deal damage if you also also deal two damage if you also own the combo plate the chicken finger so bring another chicken card deal one damage for each different chicken loot you have chicken breastplate add one defense for each different chicken loot you have so there's a lot of chicken stuff here's the combo plate I'll uh, add one defense. Also, add two if you have the Wombo Blade. Interesting. Alright, so before I think we go through the events and monsters, we're going to look at some of the miniatures. I'm just going to unwrap those guys. I just want to make sure there were no other... Alright. Let's look at some miniatures. Scoot out of the way. Scoot out of the way. They give me this cool generic brown box to look at miniatures. I mean, I don't really care what it comes in because I'll usually find something different. Why does it look like I'm missing someone? Got uh, an empty hole right there, so I don't know what's up with that. Alright, we're going to look at the miniatures as we look at the character cards. So first, let's look at our different munchkins, because we've already seen them. So, we have our... Super munchkins. We have our female. She's got, like, a giant axe. It's the, uh... Oh boy, I can't think of the name of it. It has a name, it's from the game. Um, here's Spike. I think that's Melody, if I'm correct. It's a good name. He's got the Orc Begone Saw and the Big Giant Mallet Viking Helmet. So these are our two Super Munchkins. Here's our Wizard. Good details on there. They look like the pictures on their cards. There's a mallet. You can see how you the line on there, right? That blood would have been on there. Uh, the cleric. We have our thief. It's fun to keep these guys out if I was playing generic. Card munchkin. Um, our dwarf. And our our fighter is a spear and a sword and a shield. Alright, so that was our munchkins. Let's look at some of our monsters.
I'm trying to sort them quick. Sorry. So, before we look at monsters, I guess, our first cards are, which we have some empty room cards. These are ones that will take place where there aren't monsters, so uh, when you're anchoring them rooms, you can see what they do. So, this is the farm villa. Uh, it gives you one uh, gold, and it gives... Uh, it puts two threat in the pool for other players to spend, and we'll just switch those cards to later. Um, we have the Dead Mall. Empty room, roll a die. If you roll a lightning bolt, gain a loot. Troll Bridge. Take one gold from each rival player with more gold than you. The Brawling Tavern. When you enter this room, gain one potion. Or magic. The Church of St. Munchkin. When you enter this room, take one potion from any player with more fame than you. The Escalators to Nowhere. When you enter this room, gain one magic. When you leave it, you can move to any empty room. Uh, the Tournament Hall. If you clear this room, gain three recruit or three gold. The monster player gets one reroll. I, yeah, I might have to look at books what that means. Almost safe space. Gain one gold. No more than two threat monsters can be played in this room. Honest Alice Casino. When you enter this room, gain four dice. You can gain one for each lightning bolt you roll. And there's the farm villa. I just want to see what that symbol means. Oh yeah, stands for reroll. Okay, that's what I thought. Just wanted to make sure. Alright, so now we're going to look at some of the different monsters we have. So we have our wear turtle. I talked that rabbit a lesson, and I can teach you one too. Uh, one gold, so it's different attack and defense. So this will actually be a guy that's on the board. So here's our miniature for him. And they're wandering monsters because they will move around the board too. And then like in comparison, like a regular munchkin, he's not that much, but he's a regular sized character. So we have our Leprechaun, he's a leper, he's, uh, his body parts are falling off. Uh, the monster player gets two re-rolls, so there's our Leprechaun. Stubs there. So the character I said I was missing that fell out of the box or got misplaced or whatever. Don't see him floating around in there, but maybe he got stuck in a different box or something. Uh, he's the insurance salesman. So fighting monsters can not use their hero power. So I'll have to take a look and try and figure out what happened there. The mass produced game, it's possible it just got missed in the box or something. Um, mall rat. Like a mall, like a hammer. Versus a mall versus a shopping center. So there's our mall rat. And now. So the first. These guys are all considered level 2 monsters. Um, so they can only like go on the doors in level 2.
And then we have the Harpy. I can hit you right in the D minor. <laughs> um, all the monsters gain one attack. So there's our Harpy being the mythical creature and someone who is also playing a harp. Now we're going to get to our level 3 monsters. So these guys are bigger. So we're going to have, and they're more powerful. So like the level 2 guys all gave 2 threat. These guys give 3, have more attack and health. The large angry chicken. You cursed omelet eaters prepare to die. So roll 1 die for each shame token you have. Here is the cursed chicken. Or sorry, large angry chicken. So he is big, so let's compare him to one of our regular guys. So he's almost twice the size. So that's what's cool, like E9 versus like a regular monster. So it kind of gives that good impending threat. We have the Cyclops. Uh, the Doctor is in. He's a doctor, one eye. Uh, before fighting, turn all your armor class face down till the end of the turn. Ooh, I could make him hard to beat. Um, and there is, he is. Oh, these things are hefty. Hefty, hefty, hefty. We have the awesome Hippogriff. Splat. Steals extra damage. Here is the huge Hippogriff. So, like... There's a Hippogriff next to a Munchkin. Or if I compare him to one of the other guys. Those guys are big. That's cool though. I love that they had different sizes. We have the Net Troll. Uh, my lack of abilities makes me crazy. He's more attacking. So there's our Net Troll. He's the little pocket protector. Hangs the his back. Uh, this is even awesome if you've been playing Munchkin since the beginning. These are characters that have been in since the beginning. You get to see them, you know, like 3D versions of them, which is cool. She has a floating nose. It's really gotten into running. Uh, you can't leave a room until you defeat the floating nose. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, that is gross. So there's the nose. It's just a giant nose with boogers coming down. Um, I can imagine how gross this would be if you painted it. Um, little puddles down there. Then we have some level 3 empty rooms. So these things don't have the monster picture on the back like these guys do. Uh, random monster generator. If you clear this room, gain two fame. Then a monster player can play an additional threat monster for free. Oh boy. Uh, the unlucky palace. Empty room. You gain one uh, potion for each monster you defeat in this room. And the friendly local game store. You may discard any amount of loot for two gold each. All right. Then finally, um, for miniatures, we have our boss monsters. So the boss monsters are going to have this as a level 1, a level 2, and a level 3. Because you have to beat them three times. And they're going to get more powerful each time. So that just doesn't mean like the first person that gets to the boss gets a lucky hitting wins. You have to beat them... All three times actually clear the dungeon and end the game. So we have a bull rog, um, which is like the bull rog from Lord of the Rings, except he's a bull, so the giant fiery monster. Nothing personal. Killing adventures is just a job like any other, you know. Um, so has three attack, four health. Then his second one, he gains another die, adds some more effects. And then the two just showing his level two. Thank you. Gains another die, more effects. So that is the Bullrog. Let's take a look at this guy. Okay. He's massive. 
He's got a giant flaming whip. He's got fire. He's got a little cute tail. His hooves. So, it's a scale. Him versus a munchkin. I love that they made him a different color, too. So, like, him versus the net troll. So, he's, like, in comparison size of, like, a munchkin to another small guy. So, that is awesome. Like, they made these guys so huge. Because then they feel like, again, they feel like bosses. So, we have the Plutonium Dragon. I don't really get why you people keep coming here. Uh, three attack, five defense. So, he has a uh, little bit more health. His health keeps going up, so this is attack. So he's actually kind of like, you see the harder of the two bosses. As he gets up to seven health. And let's look at that guy. The awesome plutonium dragon. Like little tiny arms. He's like, well, I'm get you guys. And then, yeah, let's compare him to, compare him to the dwarf. I mean, look at that. But, I mean, the dwarf is small to begin with. So, if he was fighting the wizard. It's what? Like, one, two, two and a half. You know? Uh, dragon versus a chicken. That's crazy. These guys are huge. Alright, so now that we've seen all the monsters, we've seen all those, we're going to look at all the threat cards. Um, so each player will have so many threat cards, and then during the other player's turns, they can play these uh, to like, add things to their empty rooms or versus monsters to make it harder for them. So like up here at the top, it costs zero. So add plus one attack to the monster player's roll. going to be a bunch of the same ones. So now there are monsters you can add in there. So if they're fighting someone that doesn't have room that doesn't have a monster, you can make them fight one. So you have the Hydrant, a, a Hydra, Ant, Fire Hydrant. Three things in one. That is hilarious. I love it. Um, I wish I had a miniature of the Hydrant. Um, Andrea the Merciless. It's an event card. So you can move one roaming monster, one room. If Eric the Jerk has been played, you can add an additional shame token if you're defeated. Here's Eric the Jerk. Uh, move one, so it's the two different creators, uh, Andrea and Eric. So they're making fun of themselves. Uh, move one roaming monster, one room. If Andrea the Merciless has been played, you can't use a hero's powers this fight. We have a barrel of monkeys. You can't be defeated if the barrel monkeys steal one of your item cards. Uh, humongous is an event makes them uh, bigger. Move one rolling monster one room has one extra health if it fights this turn. Wandering monster move one rolling monster one one room. Yeah, move them the miniature guys around the dungeon so they. Some of like, oh, I'm going to take this path, this path, maybe dodge, and you can move them, like, into that room or into their pathway. Um, if you, stick figure, if you can't defeat this monster, game one shame token, as it should. Can't beat him. Uh, Bigfoot, can't beat him, it stomps all over your loot, discard half your loot, your choice, round it up. Ferris Oxide Monster, uh, this is a rust monster. No, Iron. Rust, rust. Ferris is iron, oxide, oxygen. Uh, before you fight it, turn all the weapon cards face down until the end of turn. I'm the boss. Move one boss monster. Move the boss monster to your room after the fight. It returns to its lair. Even if you beat it, you don't take the sword and you don't take discard this card. Oh, that's mean. Jump a boss up to attack someone. Uh, Tentacle Demon, destroy one of the active player's loots of my choice. Flying Frogs, uh, I drop this card in your play area from a height of at least 3 feet. Any loot card it hits is discarded unless you gain one shame token. Take that, if we're in the same room, you, I take half of your gold, round it up, ha. Uh, the best card, uh, the 270... 2,738 orcs. 
They made a bunch of joke parody cards on that one. Analysis paralysis. It's a gaming thing where you can't make up your mind. Uh, choose one. I choose for you how you're lightning this. How you use your lightning this, lightning this turn. Sorry about that. Uh, Shrading Frode. Move one roaming monster. If you can't clear it, gain a Shane token. Wood for sheep. Uh, Katan reference, I believe. Take one of your loot. Give it. Give you one of mine. You can't prevent this. You can prevent this by giving me two gold. Uh, Kamikaze Kobolds. That's funny. Um, the Exploding Dice. If this monster is defeated, it explodes in one damage to all heroes in this and connected rooms. Uh, Curse, the Duck of Doom. You have a duck on your head. Put this card on top of your hero dashboard, hiding your hero power. Discard this when you gain a level. Why would you pick up a duck in a dungeon? That's what they always say. Um, all aboard. I pay the active player one gold by moving one roaming monster, one room for any roaming monster defeated this turn. Uh, also gain one reward, but not for clearing the re reward. Okay. Um, enraged. Some of these are things I don't quite understand because I haven't memorized the rule book. Uh, enraged. Move one roaming monster, one room. That monster gains one attack dice. The Lame Goblin, if you can't defeat this monster, gain a shame token. Uh, rubber Banding, if you have at least three uh, fame more than me, I get three coins. If not, nothing happens. And I'm guessing the I means whatever player played it. Um, area Control, he's sitting on the game board. Heroes who are alone in their rooms gain one star and one, one fame and two gold. Darker Ritual. Add two threat to the pool immediately. I can play another threat card. Oh, that's mean. Does it cost zero? Um, bidding war. You and I each secretly bid coins. Whoever gets, whoever wins gets to pick the loot and loses the big coins. If we tie, we both lose coins and gain nothing. Dice placement. Move the rolling monster one room. Place... The player, the monster player chooses the result of the monster's die before it's rolled. Ah, the infamous potted plant. If you defeated the rival player who feeds the potted plant takes a lose. He's worth one fame per potted plant. And we got a couple of them. And then we have one final card. We have the Club of Fighting. Uh, I hide one coin from a pile in one of my fists and you pick one if you pick Correct fist, you take a coin. If you get it wrong, I take the coin and you deal one damage. Alright, so that was Munchkin Dungeons, the base set. Um, check back for the other videos where I will be opening up uh, expansions. Uh, several different big expansions, small expansions, eventually Kickstarter stuff. Check you guys later. Bye.